and welcome back. In this video, the last of the Stackwise virtual series, I'll take you through how to configure the Cisco Stackwise virtual components to deliver a scalable network. Before you begin the configuration, you need to make sure that you have the following prerequisites taken care of. Number one, both the switches in the Stackwise virtual should be of same model. Number two, both the switches should be running the same software version. Number three, both the switches should be running the same license, which is network advantage. Number four, make sure you have enough links connected for both Stackwise virtual link and dual active detection link. And make sure you also have redundancy with both of them. Now you're all set to configure the Cisco Stackwise virtual system. The first step is to configure Stackwise Virtual and a domain ID on the switches that you want to be added to the system. In order to do this, open the CLI terminal. Next, enter the global configuration mode. Next, enter the Stackwise Virtual command, which is your intention of getting into Stackwise Virtual system. Next, enter the domain ID so that both switches are added to the same domain in the system. And again, that is optional to add the domain ID. If you don't add it, we'll add it by default. And then exit the configuration mode. Next, configure the Stackwise Virtual Link or SVL to enable communication between the two switches. In order to do this, enter again the global configuration mode. Next, enter the interface configuration mode and select the interfaces that you want to be part of the Stackwise virtual link. And then run the Stackwise virtual link value command. You need to define some value with that. And then exit the interface configuration mode. So now configure the dual active detection link to ensure both the switches are active simultaneously or avoid the conflict as we call it. To do this, again enter the global configuration mode then enter the interface configuration mode. Next, run the Stackwise virtual dual active detection command. And next, exit the interface configuration mode. Now, save these configurations on the switches and reload both the switches. Once the switches are back up online, verify if Stackwise virtual was created successfully with the proper roles of active and standby and confirm that all the configured parameters are showing up properly. You're now ready to manage and configure both the switches as one logical switch. Now you can configure the multi-chassis ether channel or MEC between the stackwise virtual switch that you configured and the neighboring switches, which is probably your access layer or your core layer. This will enable distributed forwarding of traffic. To configure the MEC, you need to select the interfaces from both the stackwise virtual switches connecting to the neighboring switches and then configure a port channel. In order to do this, enter the global configuration mode. Next, enter the interface configuration mode and select the interfaces and assign the port channel configuration, which is with a particular value. And then select a protocol like it could be LSCP is a recommended one, although we do support protocols such as PACP or Modon. Similarly, add the respective port channel configuration on the neighboring switches so the port channels are formed properly. Now, your stackwise virtual system is ready and your network is reliable, scalable, and manageable.